Hello, this is the Cobra M40 SPB, which is a 16 inch self propelled rotary mower with a Briggs and Stratton engine. And this is how you get it in a large cardboard box like this, nice and sturdy. So, what we're going to do is just open it all up and then we can take the mower out and I can show you exactly how you assemble the handles and get it ready for mowing. Here we are all unpacked out of the box and this is the mower, the 16 inch rotary mower. It's a really strong engine and it. it's a Briggs and Stratton 125cc so lots of power delivered there. We've also got the grass collection box which goes on the back, I'll show you that in a few minutes time. We've got various manuals, we've got the mower manual, the Cobra manual for the mower itself and then there's also a Briggs and Stratton engine manual. So everything you need to know about the mower, setting it up, care of it, how to look after it and maintain it is in there. So keep those somewhere safe. There's also spark plug spanner for when you do need to check the spark plug, a little cable clip there and it also comes with some Briggs and Stratton oil. Assembly is very easy, all we've got to do is really put the handlebars in position and for that you will need a 13 millimeter spanner, that's the only tool that you need to do it. So let's get started, so very easy to do. I'm just going to just lift the handlebars slightly forward a little bit because they're going to fit onto these mounts just here at the back of the mower. They've already got the nuts and bolts in so what we need to do is take them off. They're only finger tight so it's taking the nut off, the split washer there and the flat washer. So take the little bolt out and then we'll need those to reassemble it. So there are two on this side and then there are two on this side. So if we take them all out we can then offer the handlebars into position. And now all we need to do is just to offer up the handlebars. So they're partly together so it's just a case of opening them up like this and on the ends there are two plastic protectors just to stop these scratching anything in transit so just pull those off you don't need those again and then it's just a case of lifting the handlebars up like this making sure that we get all the cables in the right order just there and then what I'm going to do is just fold this back so I'm just going to move the grass box out of the way and just pop that on the floor for a second just so I've got a little bit of room to work because what we need to do is to get these handlebars like that and then it's a case of putting the bolt from the inside it's got a square end on it and it fits into a square hole so that it won't turn it's just a case of tying it through like that just twisting it so that it locks into position and then we do it in the order of a flat washer and then one of the split spring washers goes on and then we can put on the nut and at this stage I'm just putting it on finger tight so I can do that again to the bottom hole just give it a little bit of a wiggle to make sure that it fits in and then it's the flat washer and the split washer and then just put on the nut finger tight and then I'm just going to repeat that on the other side and then we can start to tighten everything up all right, and then make sure that this is on the right side at the moment the way it's gone in it's wrong so I've just got to flip it over so that it fits on the outside of the red mounts there, the red brackets and then we can pop that nut in, just give it a wiggle, flat washer, split washer and a nut. Just a bit of a wiggle, there it goes, locks into position. And then you need your 13 mil spanner just to tighten these up and we want them to be fairly tight. Um, the, the washer there, the split washer will flatten out and stop them vibrating off. So we'll just tighten those all the way around, all four. So they're nice and secure now, they will never be taken off. So what we need to do then is to lift up the handlebars. We've just got to be careful that we don't trap any wires when we lift those up. And there's no adjusting to do, we've already got these clips on here so we just tighten those up like that. So that holds the handlebars 
really tightly in place there. And then finally, what we need to do is just make sure all these cables are all held together. So it's supplied with a clip that holds three cables. So I put the cables in there first and then just pop it on there like that. And that just holds them all in place and together. And the final thing I'm going to do with this is we've got a recoil start with this mower and we've also got a little bracket here that holds this just so you don't have to bend down when you're starting it. So if we pull in the front lever here that takes compression off the engine and then just gently pull it out, loop it round there so that's in position for when we need to start it. So the thing we can do next is put on the grass box. Grass box with this model is already assembled so it's a good size grass box and we lift up the flap at the back and that just sits on those two steel pins there nice and securely and that holds it in place and when the grass box is full we just lift the flap lift it off and then we can put the grass cuttings on the compost heap we're ready to mow once we've taken it outside we need to put some petrol in there and some oil and then we can start the engine we've come outside to fuel it up so i'm going to put some petrol in it first this is the fuel cap just here so we can take that off we don't need this anymore, it's just to remind us that that's what it is. Um, this is unleaded petrol, always use fresh petrol, don't use any that you've had in a can for months and months because it's not good, it doesn't start as well, doesn't ignite, so nice fresh petrol in there. And then put the lid straight back on. And then we need to put some oil in the engine. Briggs & Stratton engine oil is supplied with the mower. And this model needs 440 millilitres of oil. This is a 600 millilitre bottle, so there's plenty of oil in there. There's also graduation marks on the sides so that you can work out how much is in there. So we know we've got 600 to start with, so we're going to put 440 into here. So just pour it in nice and slowly. Just check to make sure we're not putting in too much. Too much oil can damage the engine, as can too little, so we do really need to get as near to that 440 as possible and maintain it at that. Yep, that's absolutely fine. It's also a good idea to check the oil with the dipstick, so normally we'll just leave it to settle for a few minutes and then wipe your dipstick, put it back in, fasten it into position, then slacken it off, take it out and then you'll be able to see on the dipstick that the oil is to the mark that you need it. If it's not, just leave it a little bit longer to let the oil drain in or put a bit more oil in. But that is really good and you should use that on a regular basis. Every time you mow, you should check your dipstick before you start the engine. So we've got petrol in, we've got oil in, we can put it on the lawn now and we can start the engine. The controls are very easy to use. Uh, we've got the engine brake here, which is the front lever. We have to have that pulled in to be able to start the engine. It won't start without that. Once the engine's running, the lever at the back we can push forward and that will propel the wheels and we can start mowing. We've also got the throttle just here. So we've got the hare and the tortoise here. So we want it to be on the hare when we're mowing to give us more revs. The height of cut is adjusted with this lever here and when you buy it, it will be on the lowest setting. And a little tip when you start the mower anytime is always put it on a fairly high setting so that you lift the mowing deck away from the grass. It doesn't scuff the grass and it doesn't cause any strain to the engine. And then round the other side before we start and then we can start it, we've got just here this little primer button, this red button here which is connected to the carburetor so there's no manual choke when the engine is cold we just push the button two or three times and that will pump some fuel through into the carburetor and it will start. Starting procedure is very simple once we've primed it we pull back the engine brake we're going to pull the recall when the engine's running we can then put it into gear and drive away so engine brake in And to stop the engine, we just release the engine brake. And remember, all the information you need are in the manuals, the engine manual and the mower manual. So do refer to that whenever you need to. So that's it. There's your mower all set up. Enjoy mowing. Remember to register your Cobra online at www.cobragarden.co.uk. Always have your Cobra serviced regularly. Check the website for your nearest dealer.